Hey up, my lovelies, this is Neil, your rider, guider, YouTube channelist coming at you from sunny Radelaide here in South Australia. Thanks for tuning in for this week's upload. Before we get started, of course, quick thank you to all my subscribers, old and new, and we've had a few new ones recently. Could it be because things are getting better, or is it because I'm giving away that Drift Ghost X camera? Could be that. Anyway, thanks a lot smashing good to see you joining me we are moving on up we are we've got some more as they say momentum uh ah yeah and if you're not already subscribed why the hell not what's going on hit the button hit the subscribe button i reckon if we get to 300 before christmas we'll do the draw so one in 300 chance of getting that camera come on get your friends on it get everybody subscribing anyway onwards uh, what we're going to look at this week, yeah, more defensive riding examples, of course, it's what I do. Uh, in particular, uh, this week I'm going to do uh, my take on being a boss of your own space on the roads. Watch this. Okay, away we go. Not this uh, white station wagon, estate car, it's a Skoda. He was carefully watching me. And he was going very steady. That gave me a clue as to he was probably going to drop it right in behind me. And true enough, it did. Uh, I was going to go into this right-hand lane and drop in behind this uh, people carrier in front. And of no, I, I've been in Australia 13 years and 11 of them years have been very happy. The other two years I spent sat at traffic lights. They take forever here. A seriously long time. This, this transitioned about seven times. I've edited so much out of this clip. Anyway, we're on our way. We've got a right arrow eventually, a white one, a green one, and off we, were, off we go now. The, the SUV, sorry, this people carrier, straight to the right-hand lane. I go into the left-hand lane here. He's quite a big barrier to what I can see down the road because of his tinted windows. I get that a lot here. However, as soon as I went there, I noticed straight away further down the road, which I'll show you in a second, beyond this white SUV, there's another junction. There's a, there's a ute, dark-coloured ute wanting to come out. And I could see him. So I immediately swung out across. And there he is, you can see him now, giving myself a good view of him, and hopefully a good he's got a better view of me because he's got stoby poles and road furniture. And I drop back here, I give myself a bit of a better line of sight at this point. And I've gone to the right side of the road, put my visor down now, I've got behind me, I've ticked him off. But look what I see there. I noticed there that car wanted to turn right. He's coming towards us and he's going to turn right across the front of me. This car, you can't see it there, he's just indicating right so that people car is going to go right and block his view of me completely. Listen to me engine noise and watch me back off. So I backed right off, let the road clear itself and on my way. Moving ahead, railway crossing, over the railway crossing. As I get across this railway crossing, I've got another similar situation where I wanted to position myself better. Here are the scenarios here. I've got cars right and left. The same situation. I've got a car right here wanting to turn right. Car on the left, he's not much of a danger to me. However, we've heard of target fixation. My concern is that this guy's got target fixation on these two cars and not even seen me. So what I decide to do is get in amongst them. He's not a risk to me, this guy on the left, because I'm protected by these if I can catch him up. So what I do, I just make sure I get into the same zone as this car, making sure I'm right in his face. I could have backed right off, but then you cause a little bit of confusion and a bit of hesitation. You don't know who's going where. You play the percentages when you're on your bike. So I put myself in a better position there to get through that junction safely, just by safety in numbers, if you like, getting in amongst them. As I head through, I find myself here now, and I've got that white Skoda behind me still. I'm in this guy's blind zone. He can't see me, I can't see him in that mirror. He's slightly to the left of the lane. I think, sod it, squeeze it up. Getting to there, now this is my, my bubble, my rules is this, this is, I create for myself in my head an imaginary area where I work in and I control that area and I allow vehicles in and out of it on my terms my bubble my rules it's 25 meters 30 meters in front 30 meters behind and 10 meters either side five or 10 meters either side, depending on what type of road i'm on but i'm constantly keeping that area my zone and keeping control of it 
Uh, I'll show you an example further on of how I do this. And as I'm heading towards this next, under the bridge now, I've got, I think, what happens here? Set of lights, another set of lights. You notice they've gone to amber here. I've still got that white Skoda behind me. And I'm thinking, right, let's back him up. Let's not ride right up to the back of this black Mazda in front, which is there. I think it's a Mazda. Um, and stop. Because at that point, I've got no control over the car behind me at all. If I do this, slow right down, drip the gears down a little bit, out a second, and I'm just bimbling. That score has gone to the right hand lane. I've still got a white U that's in behind him. I slow him down before I get to my car. See, he's catching me up now. Watch him catching, catching. But I've still got space in front. I bring him to my speed. And then I come to a halt. We both come to a halt at the same time. I just backed him up and slowed him down and controlled what he was doing behind me a little bit. He probably didn't even notice I'd done it. That's how daft it is and that's how cool that is. It's a really cool tip when you're approaching junctions uh, or standing traffic, traffic lights. And if you can just back them off and it smoothens out your ride, you're not actually losing any time. You're just being smoother and you're controlling your environment and being in charge of your own area. As we move on, how long am I sat here? Probably a while. Here we go. Transitioned into another little section of road here. Now watch this one. Right, here we go. Watch here. Brake lights on these cars in the left hand lane. Of course the temptation now is phew, let's go, they're all slowing down. Your, your risk factor though is because they're all braking, it's, it's a car up front, the temptation is for one of these two cars, I bought both of them, to swing around. I then therefore cover it off. I'm slowing down, making sure I'm not going to get hit. But what I do is I go right to position number five, right over here, just to go past them to give myself that bit of a buffer zone. They're, it's only about 25 mile an hour, and they're slowed right now. But I've been bumped past, and I'm safe. Don't know why they all slowed down. I haven't quite worked that out yet. As I go past again, I find myself again in this same situation. This blue one's put his brake lights on, this car there turning left. I do the same thing, right to the right hand side to make sure it doesn't come across me. Covered it off. Moving ahead, a little bit further down the road, I'm in the left hand lane now, that blue car is now behind me. And I get a situation where as I'm going down this slight bend, I've got a set of traffic lights. And I decide again, same situation, my bubble, my rules. Back him off, slow him right down. Of course, my options are now at this point, go for the lane split. However, I don't need to, because I've done this, I've backed him right up. Slowing him down to my speed. And we both come to a halt at the same time. He it, again, he doesn't even realise I've done it. And the option, of course, is to just be 50, 60 metres in front of him, ride up to the back and stop. Doesn't happen often. You'd be very unlucky to get rear-ended, wouldn't you? But I have been. It's the only time in 30-odd years that I've ever got hit. I got rear-ended at a stop sign. And because of that, it's maybe very aware of what's happening you know, as I'm coming to stop signs, etc. And in situations like this, I'm even more aware. It's just raised my spidey senses even more to what can happen. Um, so there you are again. That's another situation where I've backed up and controlled my space at the front and controlled my space at the back. And that's, I think that's it for that show. Now we've got another, another scenario here. Right, what's happened here? Oh yeah, just coming up to another set of traffic lights. They're red, but I've got the whole lane to myself here. I'm not really at risk of this one swapping lanes. He's right over the arse of the white car. A great example of what you can do here. Let's um, talk about one thing that I do sometimes. I ride 17 k's to work. And sometimes I'm not in rush hour, but I'll try and get there without putting my feet down. And it's one of these situations, great practice to control the traffic as you're coming up to traffic lights, coming up to standing traffic, trying to do it without putting your feet down getting to the end of your journey and you can it's good practice and just slowly bimbling up to lights waiting for them to go with well, car, car drivers motorists have done this for years just a nice glance across the traffic and away we go making sure it's nice and safe that that scenario like i said it's one of my favorite ways of of riding and backing and defensive riding is backing cars up slowing down controlling your environment and bossing your space don't be that shrinking violet be prominent be seen but control 
what's happening around you by your speed, your row positions, you can go anywhere you want in your lanes. Make sure you're using every inch of space to your advantage. And it's all about, again, being prominent. Don't care whether you're on a C50 Honda. You don't want to be in this left-hand side of this lane hidden. You need to be out here or out here and being seen and positioning yourself perfectly all the time and using your line of sight and imagining what they can see of you. Let me tell you, if you're involved in a collision, to be honest, it's your own fault. You should have seen it happening. That's my opinion. It's quite controversial, but car drivers, but they're not, they're not ever going to get any better. I've said it before. We have to be in charge. And if you get hit, you get knocked off, you come off or you hit the brakes because somebody pulled out and your front wheel goes off in, and you come off in the wet, it's to your own fault. You should have foreseen it. You should be prepared for everything. That's what it's all about. That's, what, that's how you'll survive motorcycling. And as I say, every collision is avoidable. Every time you fall off, it's avoidable just by forward planning. Keep it real, keep it safe. That's it for this week. I have got coming up another rider tip, a quick tip as well to be released this week. We'll do that and we'll get this one uploaded. See you soon, gang. Thanks for watching.